<laughs> if I speak with the languages of men and of angels, but don't have love, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and know all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but don't have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my goods to feed the poor, and if I give my body to be burned, but don't have love, it profits me nothing. <laughs> That's one of the best podcasts ever. Ever. Top five dead or alive. Welcome to Pod Caviar. We have a great episode today, and I say we because Grand from One Grand Mom is in the building as usual. Hello. How are you doing today, sir? Fantastic, man. Just had a little bit of a disaster between the podcast. Day yeah, and yeah. Ready to yeah. go. Listen, I didn't say this beforehand, but tomorrow, Monday, is uh, Pod Caviar's first birthday. For and, real? Yeah, it's turning man, one tomorrow. Yeah, congratulations. It's been a long fucking road, Insert man. standing yeah. ovation here, sir. Hell yeah, yeah man. Absolutely, man. I'm it's proud of you, It's been a while, but hey, we're here, yeah. and it's gotten better since the beginning. It'll be easy to remember mm. for me, because this weekend's my daughter's birthday, too. Yeah, so, Pod so yeah. Pod Caviar is when yeah. birthday is one day it's after my daughter. Something that I had, well, I was looking at my calendar for something completely uh unrelated to it and then i was like oh shit it's right there crazy yeah, yeah. so just one hey, year huh yeah man if you've <laughs> you've done very well for yourself i had to catch up man year, because man. you were you were light years ahead of me i just made a lot of podcasts yeah. <laughs> i don't i don't necessarily want anybody confusing quantity with quality <laughs> <laughs> nah man they were awesome yeah. so uh if it, the thing is i've said this before but I've been planning a podcast for a long time. I know I talked about GC Radio, mm -hmm. which predated Pod Caviar, and that's something that I'm bringing back mostly in a streaming sense uh, with gaming because GC is for Game Caviar. But I thought about doing a podcast years ago, and I just wanted to find a a I wanted to find a company that that could host a podcast and really get it out there. And I found that with Libsyn and. They, they did an amazing job of distributing the podcast to all of these places. And I haven't been... I haven't been any happier with the choice that I made than I am right now. Are you just making fun of me right now? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, promise you I'm not. Not, not, that, not that that's out of bounds or anything, <laughs> but I was just, you know, felt a bit attacked there. Uh, yeah, I didn't do a lot of research before I started my podcast. As yeah. a matter of fact, I'll be totally honest with you. I really didn't know about podcasting mm -hmm. when I started podcasting. Yeah. Because, it, it, dude, it's something that really has gained traction I'm, within the past couple years. I'm man. always very late to games yeah um i intentionally didn't purchase a smartphone until 2013 mm -hmm. because i was like i don't need the government tracking me and there's nothing <laughs> on that phone that i can't do on my computer <laughs> and then you know back then i was ferociously single yeah as soon as i got a smartphone i was like oh yeah yeah <laughs> i see what's going on here All right and yeah then, you know and then years passed and really the only thing i ever knew about podcasting it, it started for me you know like the one great or sports with a capital F started in 2016. Mm -hmm. I started, I figured out what a podcast was shortly before that. Mm -hmm. And really with no research, I really wasn't listening to podcasts. Yeah. I was just like, I understood how a radio show worked. I had mm -hmm. done a couple of like internet radio shows in the interim. Right, and I was right. like, okay, I know what I'm doing here. I'm going to start a podcast. Yeah. And yeah. then I started listening to yeah. Rogan and Burr. But see, the thing is the, the way that you went about doing it is that, that was, 
something that I always tell people to do because if you wait too long, mm-hmm. then you'll miss the wave. Exactly. But I think you and I, we we came in right at the the perfect time. Yeah. Where the wave that I did the same thing with YouTube, like I got in the beginning of that wave and then mm-hmm. it crashed. So yeah. I feel like even if this wave of podcasting crashes, what you and I have, the quality that we put in and then the research oh, yeah. and then the, the content that we put out, we'll be OK. Of course, because th- we're naturals at this. Yeah. And, so. co- and consistency is important. Mm-hmm. And now that we're working together, yeah. we're always driving each other to keep doing. Podcasts. Of course, because it's the only way you're going to get any better and improving and adapting. Exactly. Not yeah. losing your spirit as far as what, what you founded your podcast on. But also not getting left behind exactly. because a lot of people say like, OK, well, if you're adapting and you're keeping up with the trends, you're selling out. Not necessarily. Yeah. You just keeping up with the pack because dude, I'll let you, you have to. You want to be successful. Yeah. I'll let you know when I've sold out when I have a grill that says <laughs> yeah. one gram army. And diamonds. Right. I am for sale. Listen, I am at the age was, now. The revolution dude. is canceled, in my opinion. Oh yeah, you know what yeah, I mean. Yeah, like, no, it was guy got it. Yeah, that was that was something late teens, early twenties yeah, shit. Where you angry. you angry, you're mad, yeah. you're standing for something. Yeah, you want to no. be a nonconformist? No, yeah. I, I, I'll conform. Yeah, at this <laughs> yeah at this age, I'm just mad at myself. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? I'm rebelling against <laughs> myself at this age. Right. And I will gladly if. If Domino's Pizza is like, I need you to just spend 20 minutes of each podcast talking about how awesome Domino's Pizza is. Yeah, sold. Dude, we'll kill it. Yeah. We'll kill it. We would kill that shit. I'd be like, serious? Domino's Pizza cures cancer. Yeah. <laughs> it's fucking amazing. Are yeah. you shitting me? It does it. Yeah. But in the interim, it's all been good content. It's all been fun. I was so happy. It has been. I was so happy when you started doing your podcast too, though, because mm-hmm. I knew that you were somebody that was going to stick with it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I yeah. knew you weren't fucking around. No, no, you no, know, no, I knew you no. weren't going to, you know, oh, I'm going to do a podcast and then stop doing it. No. Nah. You know. Uh-uh. Ever since I stopped doing, doing GC Radio, I wanted to get back into it because this shit is all audio. So it's so easy. Yeah, and it's uh, fun. And, uh, yeah, it is fun. So much it fun. It is very fun. The Caviar City stuff is great. I mean, we're just yeah. scratching the surface. Oh, man, yeah. I, and I was thinking been... about that shit last night to the point to where I I put together like a crossover movie and everything Beautiful. where it, and, and I, I really just set the whole atmosphere and the world itself. Mm-hmm. And what I what I really came up with was um the the earth as we know it isn't the same, you know, it's 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 dead land. Yeah. The domes of the cities, Caviar City is a big dome, mm-hmm. and then you have little domes here and there that you'll hear about. See, I always <sighs> assumed Caviar City was like a a a uh, like a like a cloud city in space sort of mm-hmm. situation. I, I would I, I did think about that yeah. and I put a I put a base on the moon, kinda yeah. like the the command center. Mm-hmm. That way the story that I'm going with, you, it's going to be very, very, very important that okay. that's on the moon. Excellent. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. No. I mean, I don't want to ruin it right now, who but knows yeah. Where this is going? Yeah. It, it's know? mad. Listen, what I came up with last night, it was a way to further push the Caviar City a story and then incorporate the the world. I saw mm-hmm. a video on YouTube where that talked about world building. Mm-hmm. And a lot of these movies do a good job of building a world. You're talking yeah. about Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter. And it's more than a story. When you build a world, you have these cults of fans that mm-hmm. come together and on forums and then they, they want to learn about this world and really be immersed in it. A lot of these people who came up with like Game of Thrones mm-hmm. and Harry Potter and, and Lord of the Rings, they come up with their own dialect and own language yeah, yeah, and then yeah. it gets incorporated in the fan. That's what Caviar City will be, and that's yeah. what we're building it now. And it's not easy. Yeah, see, and I think that we both appreciate too, though, the concept of something like 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 Demolition Man, one of the most right. highly oh, underrated God, films yeah. of all time. Dude, because yeah. there's because you know it's one of those things where you you know it's a Shakespearean storytelling arc is the mm-hmm. Madius Ray thing, where you basically yeah, right. means you start in the middle. Yeah. Right where there's there's all of this background mm-hmm. and the, like dialect, like you said, and mm-hmm. and things going on kind of in the periphery that aren't necessarily yeah. explained to you, right? But that you d- develop an understanding of by mm-hmm. watching the people interact with yeah. each other. Yeah, no, you and in, in Caviar City, like we have we have plans for movies, but all of the story will not be movies. Sometimes mm-hmm. it'll be a post on social media. Sometimes yeah. it'll be little yeah. little crumbs here and there. Yeah. Or sometimes it'll just be an audio. Yeah. Maybe we'll mention something on the podcast. Maybe we'll have an episode. 
episode where we and you talked about it where we act out certain exactly. things. Exactly. You know, we're not one dimensional with no, this. Not in any way. And we're we're well, always and pumping content into it. Yeah, and it's still coming together. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And that it was, is because see, like in my head early on, with the reason, like the way I recorded that uh, that deal with. The Booz McKenzie mm-hmm. addressing the people of Caviar City was that like Caviar City was sort of this experiment to put a city in orbit mm-hmm. and then they're dependent on people on the surface but also like somehow yeah. uh, self like self contained mm-hmm. but then what happens when there's just like this floating disc mm-hmm. in space under a dome yeah. that is na- now begins to be cut off from the planet yeah. I mean it's so many options yeah it so is it much. is and, it is. and then they can interact with these domes on the planet. People mm-hmm. who have survived in this like recent dystopian future. Right, right. It's so much fun to yeah. Just a lot of that. A lot of that head. will be incorporated, and and we're so flexible with with how we do this because we understand it's a daunting task. Yeah, and we can't limit ourselves. Of course not. And we have to understand that we have a whole list of artistic mediums that we can use. To get this story out of there. And yeah. that's what we're going to do. Yeah. But I'm telling you, I, I figured out how I wanted to to take all the stories and mash them together in one big central event. Hell yeah. And then once that kicks off and then once we get through that, then we can go through and you'll understand that. It'll be more established after that. Because I, noticed it'll be a, I noticed a social media post this week that <laughs> where I felt yeah. like I was like, is Tony <laughs> challenging me on the week where I have to play in my daughter's birthday party <laughs> to figure out how to do this yeah. thing with this breach? But I don't know. We don't even know what that is yet. Yeah, we don't know what it is. It's just I've, I've done some. I've heard about it in passing. I wanted to I know, have all that, that great on. audio too, though, with the crowd <laughs> screaming from yeah. the old freak out intro. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I just, I can things do like that so are much happen, with man. That. You do so when much you're doing that. research like that, yep. things are happening. And Caviar City is huge. Yeah. It's big as shit. No, it's enormous. It's the one Graham Army base alone is huge. It's so <laughs> you got to deal with that and then more. Yeah. It's and the so fact big that, that the one if everybody Army. wants to come to Caviar City because it is the biggest and it is the best and it is the yeah. craziest. There are other cities out there. Yeah. but And it, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine, too. <laughs> Caviar City will gobble you up. Yeah. Yeah. I knew that was empty. Um, yeah, I, I love the idea too, though, that the one gram, that caviar city is so large that mm-hmm. the one gram army, it's influence in normal peace times yeah. is like delegated to these like sectors that are close to the base right? and that there's not really necessarily like a central government that's preventing the army, one gram army base from, no, no. you know, practicing Mm-mm. crowd control. No. You know, propaganda, yeah, sirens, curfews, yeah, yeah. removal of listen. Caviar City is not a walk fields. in a park. It's no. not. It's not no, no, anything. No. You, you, you. If you've been following since day one, and then even before the podcast, this predates the podcast. There was the tactical urban nightmare, which really shaped the 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 world as it is now. And now you have these little domes. Before you build, there has always been a, a period of destruction, and that's mm-hmm. what, essentially what you meant to. You don't go to Caviar City by right; it's by um, it, it, it is it is given to you. Mm-hmm. It is it is not your right. No, it's selective. You know? Yeah, it is selective. Yeah, absolutely, and you you just live there and you do the best you can't go against it, and you always have to. Um, uh, work towards making it better. Yeah, and, so and, you know, and, well, privilege. And, that's the word. Yeah, yeah it's a I privilege th- to live there. Yeah, and I threw out the class three citizens things because mm-hmm. I assumed that like able-bodied people would mm-hmm. all be classified. Yeah, and their value to society. Yeah, you know, that, yeah. the three. It's is a hostile low. time. Well, they gotta go, somebody's got to go to work in those shirt factory. Of course, uh, shirt caviar yeah. textile factories. Yeah, Man, it's gonna be fun. Yeah, yeah, we got this. It is, it is in good hands. And I know it's taken a while, and um, I've had people that hit me up like, look, man, I'm really I'm eager to see this. I want to see where it's going. We're working on it, and it's coming along, and it's going to be awesome. Oh, yeah. Listen, we got this. We got this. No, it, yeah. And I've I've also considered, I mean, I don't know if we're necessarily discussing on the podcast, but we definitely have to fill time. Mm-hmm. Um, I was considering, too, maybe me and you sitting down and figuring out like a week, maybe later in the year, like mid-year, mm-hmm. both take a week off. 
weekend to weekend. Right. See what I can do, and we'll uh, you know just lock ourselves in here mm-hmm. and start writing. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm down with that. Yeah. A month or two later, take a few more days off. Yeah. Create the things we wrote. Yeah. 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 We gotta. We, yeah, we're getting to the point where we have to do that at <laughs> some point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because <laughs> we gotta. Gonna, we gotta really start making some content. Yeah. Here otherwise, and there, otherwise it's gonna just be a very confusing series of right. podcasts and right. commercials. Right. Yeah. yeah. And. Um, just going back to the, the the what I said earlier, world building is is a daunting task. Of like we have to do it correctly. We have to we have to do it in a way that we get our vision out without um, sacrificing any sort of creativity that that we that we want to showcase. And it's hard to do. Yeah, and it is very hard to do. to do. The like work. we've been doing it here and there, the commercials before the podcast mm-hmm. and then us talking about it. Yeah. Even outside of the podcast, we would text talking and talk about, about it, about yep, it exactly. here and there. And so, yeah, man, it's it is very very amazing. I agree. And and when we start creating these these different stories and 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 limbs on this tree, you will see a different style between Graham and I, or whoever else we we decide to to create. Yeah, whoever for. is con- contributing, yeah. has different yeah. visions, but it's yeah. all the same. Place. It's all the same place. It's all the yeah, same place. Yeah, because and and that's more realistic than anything because you can ask a group of people about one thing and then you'll get a different story here and there every time. Every time, and that's what I want to do because I don't, as an artist, I don't want to see artists being stifled or their talent going to waste so if you have a different way of of telling a story then do it it's all good Absolutely. it's all it's all about the same thing and under, under that umbrella and you never know yeah. where it's going to take it next exactly you know what i mean exactly i would say the one thing um that other than the aesthetic of like cloud city or something like that like kind of combined with the blade runner aesthetic yeah the one thing that has ruined me is tales from the citadel because like in my yeah. mind <laughs> yeah. so much of caviar city reminds right. me of tales of the citadel obviously it does, not with it, it does, only yeah. being people who look like two different kinds <laughs> right. of people but just no, we just got people that look like you and me yeah. <laughs> that gets oh, really God. weird no, instantly <laughs> A fucking a trip club called the Creepy Graham. I oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Creepy Morty was where I was like, Man, yeah, these guys it was like, oh really god. went off the rails. Right. It's it's um yeah, but that that with us being fans of Rick and Morty, yeah, of course that will have something, yeah, some sort of motivation behind that. Yeah. Uh, but we love movies. Yeah. That's another thing that we have that's really good. Yeah. Not only do we love movies, but we love good movies absolutely that may or may not necessarily be blockbuster hits but as i've said before i love the cold following aspect because you have people that are really dedicated to your story and your world and what you have going on so that they will continue to support you as long as you acknowledge them and acknowledge their support and appreciate it there's been a lot of fans of many fan bases and movie franchises that have come out who tried to do this and it failed because they were just talking at you and not to you, so to exactly. speak. So, uh, yeah, we have many examples of what not to do, and we've decided to do the opposite. And precisely, it's coming along very well. And having a podcast established and long enough to have a year anniversary is a big thing, and it. It surprised me because I was like, damn, it's been a year already. Yep. Time flies when you're having fun. And we've definitely been having fun for Absolutely. the past year. And yeah. it's Cheers. amazing. Yeah. Absolutely. Cheers to that shit. Hell yeah. We're at 17 minutes. 17 minutes. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Any specific? Uh, no. That, I mean, that was it. Cause basically. Because I was, was going to be like, I give him the grease. <laughs> I tell him that. Put some on his finger. Stick it in his ass. If you haven't like, fuck yourself. Listen, if you haven't heard the trick. prison rape episode of One Grand Marmot that I was on, please do don't yourself. ever listen to it. Don't ever listen to it. <laughs> totally listen to it though. Yeah, so, definitely go listen fucking to awesome. it. Awesome. Those those audio excerpts that you just heard were from. Oh uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Just the most. Yeah. I've just I've never been as conflicted about anything because mm-hmm. I don't know why it's funny, and I don't know if that makes me a bad person. You know what I mean? We both have kind of dark. No, it's it's dark, dark humor. It's yeah. dark humor for yeah. sure. Yeah. But I I 
it, it's one of those things about comedy. It's one of those things about humor mm-hmm. where it's like it gets dangerous. If you start trying to explain why something is funny. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Like where like like why, you know, like why was some of the stuff Chappelle did funny? Mm-hmm. You don't need to examine it. No, you don't. It's no. it, because no. because because some, if it's funny, you, then you just go with it. Yeah. Being, right? Something being funny is mm-hmm. like, you know, almost orgasmic. It's just like this yeah. thing happens and you react to it the way you do. Mm-hmm. And it's very difficult to explain why. Mm hmm. You know what I mean? And yeah. that was, I guess that's what I had been wrestling with the last week since the episode 156 of One Graham Army <laughs> is that right. I'm like, why was that so funny? <laughs> it just is. Why? It just worked. It why worked. Why was it so funny when that guy was like, he was moaning yeah. and groaning. And I'm like, uh, in any yeah. other context, if right. anyone else, and, and maybe it's the guy telling the story. Like yeah, how yeah. he's telling the, the, the way story. that he was so matter of fact at telling it, like it was yeah. just normal because to him it is normal. Yeah. That's his world. Jesus, Christ. I mean, look, you gotta. People need to be open to understand that not everybody lives the nine to five oh, lifestyle. No. Yeah, and people are aware that people are, that that other individuals are in prison, but you don't really understand what's no. going on. You can live your whole life. Completely ignoring the day to day aspects of a person in, in prison. Right. And just live a normal life. Yeah. But when you hear about it, the way that something that you would never even imagine doing or thinking about, hearing somebody talk about it so fluently and yeah. so like, yeah, just, this is normal. It's, it's just, it's like, what? The entire. <laughs> like, why, why did he just let that happen? Why didn't yeah. he run? Why didn't he fight back? The you know? entire audio clip would have been useless. Mm hmm. To me, comedically, if he wouldn't have just been like, that's an old penitentiary trick. Mm -hmm. Because it makes you go, wait a minute. Yeah. What is this, like, communicated knowledge? Is this (laughs) race memory? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They pass it on. It's an oral tradition, pun intended. Right. You know what I mean? It's wild. It's, you know, it's no different than what you do on the outside, except it's less extreme, the yeah, outcome or the, the intended goal that you want to achieve, yeah. you know, but. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, it was a lot. Yeah. It was a bunch, right. that episode. Mm-hmm. Don't listen to it, but definitely listen to it. Yeah, yeah. No, you want to completely stay away from it, but listen to it. Yeah, I kept trying to preface the, the episode by being like, <laughs> do not listen to this episode. And remember, I told you that when you get done listening to it. Episode 156 of the One Graham Army Podcast is a a doozy. Season three, we're going to go through the ADX Colorado prisoners. This is a great epilogue to that, or prologue. It'll come up again. Yeah, it will. It definitely will. Um, But yeah, tomorrow, when I post this episode, Monday, it'll be Monday, February, what is it, the 11th? Yeah, tomorrow's the 11th. Yeah, the 11th. 2019 will be the one-year anniversary of Pod Caviar. Um, a great year. We started with PG thirteen chickens. That was the name I of the do first episode. The first, I remember PG yeah, thirteen chickens. Yeah, man, that really set the stage because I did do research on chickens. Uh, I, I'm a researcher. You know, I'm a nerd. No, I do I appreciate nerd shit. every time before your podcast. <laughs> yeah. You research. Yeah, I do like hardcore college level research yeah. on, no, I on things. That. And to me, it really it brings this story to another level when you have these sound bites when you have these these cited sources not just hearsay exactly and we dive into all sorts of shit you know the last season was the the trail of terror where we lent where we uh, went up to september 11th but we've talked about government conspiracy the montauk project some of those episodes i was exhausted when when i was exhausted when we were done just rolling all that shit around yeah really the thing you did last season that blew me away and several other people I know who I pointed towards those podcasts was mm-hmm. all the stuff about the Unabomber. Yeah, Because so, the Unabomber is someone who anybody who paid attention to the news in the last 40 years mm-hmm. was interested in. And it was something that I felt like I had learned a good bit about. Like, right. I felt like, you know, I had read his manifesto. Yeah. I kind of understood, like, what he was getting at, completely ignoring mm-hmm. where he came from. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, and maybe that's part of like, it's a side effect of like the McDonald's culture, you know, it is where you don't really know it is like, what do you want to know about Jeffrey Dahmer's childhood? Right. You, you know, he and then when you learn about it, you're like, yeah, I figured that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but the Unabomber. <laughs> right. His, no, past his background was. was yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> it was crazy. If you haven't listen, go back and listen to that episode. Absolutely. And you will see when we start talking about it. 
it's a lot of things that happen and you're like what the fuck yeah this is wild well no wonder he went and did this shit he was really groomed to do that shit and it's yeah. wild you take someone who is uh, that brilliant mm-hmm. who and yeah then and he was a very smart cook, man yeah and then cook his brain with acid yeah essentially that, that's essentially what happened i mean they uh, uh i Mm-hmm. I can't imagine no. what it would do. And especially no. somebody, especially someone like that who's probably already a bit on the spectrum. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And then you give them like all these powerful psychedelics over the course of quite a bit of time. Yeah. In macro doses mm-hmm. until they finally. Mm-hmm. And then you tell them everything's cool. Thanks for participating and send them out. Yeah. In the world. Send them out in the world. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. It has yeah. to end like that at some point. Yeah. Yeah. And it did. So. Um. What else did we do? I like the whole rider trucks thing the rider because truck that shit was, was awesome. Yeah, that that was awesome. Um, well, I'll get into that briefly. The, basically, the rider truck was the preferred weapon for terrorists <laughs> for a long time, and then I found a an article that was written by a uh, a newspaper uh, place in like Seattle, Washington, I think, where they went and they f- they got into contact with like the PR person of Ryder, and they were like, "Look, man." Just be real with me. All these terrorists are doing Why, yeah. a lot of shit with rider trucks. Do you think that it's hurting the image of rider trucks? And he was basically like, nah, man, it's business as usual. We're still rocking and rolling. And I was like, nah, that's bullshit. A little known fact, ever since we did that episode, I've seen nothing but rider trucks yeah. wherever I go. And no, I've been very aware of them. <laughs> right. And I'm not sure if that's a result of like when you're like, oh, I need a new mattress. And then you notice oh, right. how many mattress notice, stores there yeah. are. Yeah. Or if like there just are now more rider trucks on the road. Right. And it's a result of them having very laxed rental policies. Yeah. Which I think could yeah. be part of we it. We talked about that. Like that's yeah. probably the reason why terrorists flock to them. Yeah. Because they're in their in their pursuit to to catch up to and ultimately overtake U Haul. Yeah. They were slack yeah. in their they were slacking. background checking. Yeah. That some dude shows up who doesn't speak English with a driver's license for mm-hmm. some guy named Jack Wachowski. Yeah. From and New they Jersey. just threw him the keys. And, and like, then you get the World Trade Center attack, mm-hmm. the first one. And then you get the Oklahoma City bombing. Then you get the attack in, in uh, Florida where uh, a terrorist uh, ran some German um, tourists mm-hmm. off the road mm-hmm. and shit. Yeah. yeah. I Listen, I just, I, I report facts. Okay. If I do research on something, I'm not going to report some bullshit. No. Or if I do, then I'll be like, I will preface it. I wasn't lying about renter truck, writer trucks. Not even a little bit. Not even a little bit. No. Not even a touch. Because it, a lot of these stories, once you start doing the research and you start talking about it, the comedy kind of writes itself. It's a morbid, dark comedy. That is crazy that you <laughs> mentioned that. <'Cause laughs> because it, 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 but that's how it is, though. It's totally like that. Yeah. I've never even considered it like that. But I've always felt like every week of the podcast, mm-hmm. of the, even when I started doing the podcast, it was yeah. like every week before I did the podcast, I would look at a couple things. I'd be like, these things may have some comedic value. Right. Hit record, start rolling them over. Mm-hmm. There's some, it, it, shit it happens. always yeah. writes itself. The yeah. funny is always in yeah. there. Yeah, no, we'll start talking about it. Somebody will be like, well, you know, we'll make a, a joke and then yeah. it'll be hilarious yeah. because it's relevant. These yeah. companies definitely, who would have thought that if you run a company that rents out trucks that are used by terrorists and many different uh, attacks that are covered by news all over the world, would you bet money that the guy that works the PR would just brush it off like, nah, we're good? Yeah, no, 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 that no, doesn't have not. anything. That's to do hysterical. With us, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're it the, is. We're the number two truck rental of the company. Turns out we don't background check people who rent our trucks. Yeah, we don't care. Yeah, we don't care. We, we don't even ask any questions. One. Yeah, like, yeah. And I'm oh. sure that was like somewhat a corporate directive, obviously. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, you're you're beating. You're trying to beat. Yeah, you're U-Haul. trying to catch up the U-Haul. You're yeah. like rent that truck to whoever yeah. wants it. Because anybody who ever moved. Mm-hmm. That needed a truck will say, "Yeah, we're just gonna rent a U-Haul." Yeah. Nobody has ever said, "I'm mean, just rent a rider or rent a fucking." Uh, yeah, what's uh, that called? There's damn. a word for that. Where I know you, there uh, is. Yeah, and I forgot what it was. What's that word? That uh, means what was the other company? It started with a P. See, there's other moving companies, but U-Haul has that brand recognition to where you just say it's a U-Haul, even if it's not a U-Haul. And they've done that. And when you get to that position to where you have that brand recognition, you are you haven't made you became a household name. And that's that's what every company is trying to do. There's many there's there's so many different 
uh, examples of that. Next time you have a conversation or you're just listening to something or you think of something, if you just spout out and say, hey, we need this, you're, you're thinking of a product, but the company that... Eponym is the name of that. I Eponym, believe. yeah. yeah. And yeah. So, the company does a good job that they just associate that self yeah. with Well, that. yeah, it's like a brand. It's like Band-Aid. Band-Aid, yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, it's Post-it Note yep. is one of those. Yep. Yeah, as a matter of fact, in, in the UK, they refer to vacuuming as hoovering. Damn, I didn't know yeah, that. Because yeah. of Hoover vacuum. Yeah, because Hoover I mean, vacuum. Yeah, yeah. The zipper is yeah. YKK invented the word zipper. Yep. You know, there's a ton of things. A frisbee yeah. is also not the proper noun for the flying disc or yeah. whatever. Yeah. And renting a U Haul is the <laughs> proper noun for a truck you use to move shit. Exactly. Which I guess propelled U Haul into the upper stratosphere to where yeah. people who were going to yeah. commit acts of domestic terror mm. we're not going to rent from them no they're not they no, they're going to go to writer yeah because writer is trying to catch up with them so mm. they're like sure we take cash money from people who look like they've been doing crystal meth all night right. with swastikas tattooed on their face yeah. you know or whatever yeah not that that happened but yeah. pretty much yeah. but if you want to move shit writer's there for you I feel like if timothy mcveigh walked into my writer office and he was like you know covered in fertilizer and he was like mm. i need a truck and they're like when are you gonna bring it back and mm-hmm. he's like never i mean next week yeah <laughs> All right, here you yeah. go. And they just fucking throw the keys at them and shit. Ah, oh, man. Could be an issue, too, though, where U-Haul was so overly visible that these actors would have assumed that, um, not actors like people who are acting, but actors like bad actors, mm-hmm. uh, would have assumed that the they were being monitored more so yeah. than a company, a janky-ass company like Ryder. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's a yeah. mess. Yeah, it, it gets into, it gets really deep when you start doing research on it. I've always been a history buff. I love it. I know a lot of times we say facts don't matter on this podcast. They do matter when we when I sit down and research shit. They do from time uh, to time. Yeah, yeah. We may differ here and there, but for the most part, yeah. Yeah. If we say something is factual, it is definitely factual. Absolutely. And we have many years of of uncovering truths and, and, and delivering facts. It's just going to get better from here. I mean, you you got to understand, it sounds like a telethon right now. Like, I want you to call up and, and donate shit to us. But you, you got to listen what happened in the past year. You had two seasons of Pod Caviar, a lot of great topics, a lot of a lot of silly but but cathartic episodes that are off season content like this episode. Then you have um, even audio projects like the final instructions that came out. That was awesome. Yeah, it was. I was listening to it the other day, and I was like, "This is genius." I have so and much fun every week. The main thing that bothers me is that there are people out there not enjoying this with us. Yeah, yeah. That's really what. No, we're doing. no, that stays on my we mind. We never too. preach to people. We don't. We definitely are always very self-effacing. Like we yeah. don't know what the fuck we're talking about. We yeah. give people the opportunity to participate mm-hmm. via the hotlines. Mm-hmm. And that's what I'm saying. It's all gasoline. We just need that one spark. Exactly. So that when we blow, people can go back and listen to the old episodes because they're they're timeless. Yeah. We're not stuck in one time. I we agree. we're talking about shit that happened during a period of time. History doesn't change. So no matter yeah. how many times people try to change history, it's still going to be the same. It's all timeless, and we're just going to get better. But yeah, hey. I get what you're saying. Like, we we should be getting way more listeners than we're getting yeah. right now. And that's fine. We understand that. We're still striving to yeah. get to the level that we think that we need to be. Well, I'm definitely on my podcast. I'm definitely weeding through the audience. <laughs> <laughs> who has the strongest stomach? Yeah, yeah. Who, who can, can who can endure yeah. through that? Who can understand the intent? You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's a it's it's yeah. it's a mess. Yeah. We got Sometimes. studio upgrades coming yeah. and everything, oh, man. Yes. Listen, many listen, many man. Listen, listen. Hey, I was going to uh, ask, too, because you're at 30 minutes. Uh-huh. And I don't know. You you know, I, I don't know if you could do this, but maybe you could do like a separate audio for your audio only listeners mm-hmm. versus YouTube, because I don't think you'll get a community guideline strike. You'll just get one of those like copyright things. Yeah, yeah it's one of those things where they won't it. let me monetize it. But it, I wanted to fine, show yeah. you this cool thing because this guy, Lauren, obviously, is yeah. me and you have discussed right, it's a huge right. influence on me. Oh, yeah. Uh, since I began experimenting with psychedelics. Mm-hmm. Uh 
uh, he's just sort of warped my brain. But the other interesting thing about him is he's never done a music video of his yeah. own. Yeah. All of those crazy videos I've shown you, other mm-hmm. than the one with the girl dancing, yeah. were com- basically like someone else did them. Oh, okay. Because they were like, I can't understand this music. There must be some sort of visual thing. Yeah. This actually is one that he, uh, one of his tracks where someone appears to have integrated things from the most recent Blade Runner movie. I'm not even Mm -hmm. sure if that's all that's there, but it's only a minute and 30 seconds. Okay. So I figured at the end of your podcast, I could show it to you so you can sign out of your podcast. You could definitely get away with it on the audio feed. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. But yeah. so whenever you're done, I think this this also, though, gave me like a lot of like, uh, like I watched it after you started talking about Caviar okay. City when okay. I started considering that direction. Yeah, we, we talked about that. Before we wrap up, I want to thank everybody for for uh, supporting me and, and following me throughout this whole process. And even since the beginning, even Game Caviar, things that predated Game Caviar. We Graham and I have been creating since 2002, and it shows. Yeah. So we're not being cocky when we say we deserve this amount. No, no, fuck no. We've heard people that 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 tried to do what we've done, and we've always put out a better product. Absolutely. And now it's our time to really ascend to the next level. It's time to so, collect. Yeah, it is. It really is. Okay. And um, uh, on on the topic of Lorne, I love his music and everything. Um, but I understand what you're saying where people made the visuals to his music. Just so they could try to wrap their Listen, head around When I it. made the final instructions, it was something that started as a whisper. Mm-hmm. And then I even talked to you about it. That some of the bands that I listened to that really um, that, that, that were inspiration to doing that. And there's a bigger message that plays in the final instructions that says that, look, you have two sides of religion, one side that's perfectly normal and understandable. And then you have a radical side that really pushes you past the edge. More than likely, it will push you past the edge under the umbrella of God. And this is what he expects you to do. So. Um, I'm of, not telling you to not believe in a God. Believe yeah. in what you want. No, absolutely. You know, pick a side. I don't care. You're I don't give a shit. Finite time on but this. But also, don't go blindly. Exactly. You cannot. You cannot walk into religion blindly. You can't walk into anything you, that way. Yeah, yeah. You you have to. You have to understand that. Look, there's somebody out there that will teach you the Bible and then have your good intentions in mind. And some people won't. And it's that was odd. the whole thing with the final instructions. It's odd that religion is one of the few things that asks people to do something that they don't would normally never do. It's like right. literally, and a lot of times we get religion from our parents and mm-hmm. our grandparents, and it flies in the face of everything they taught us. Yeah. If it's too good to be true, it's not true. Mm-hmm. Don't just believe some shit because someone told you. Right. Find out for yourself. Yeah. And then on the back side of that, the mm-hmm. other message is like, but accept this. Yeah, accept this. Except when they this, tell you this, question yeah, that. do not question that. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Like, uh, and, it and gets often, weird. Yeah, and often they're not like, hey, find the good in it. They're like, yeah. no, this is yeah. your reality. Yeah. And yeah. the whole message behind the final instructions is there are people that will want you to turn to your neighbor and hug them and tell them that you appreciate them. And there are some people that want you to drink that fucking Kool-Aid. Ending with Jonestown was brilliant, dude. <laughs> yeah. fucking I had to. And, I had to. And we'll, we'll do, uh, we'll do a, a Jonestown episode, probably of my podcast, mm-hmm. just because I've done... Mm-hmm. I've wasted so much of... Well, not wasted, but spent <laughs> so much of my life trying to figure out what the fuck happened there. Right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, but so I will play you this if you're mm-hmm. if you're ready. Yeah, let's do that. I let's, want you uh, to take a look at this anyway. Uh, but so, yeah. We'll yeah. Rock us out of here. Let's, uh, this has been a, a great episode of Pod Caviar. We really went through the whole past... The, the past year of Pod Caviar. Uh, tomorrow is the number one, the, the first anniversary of Pod Caviar. Great time, great celebration. Graham and I have collabed again to make many different um, episodes that have been all amazing. So check out the one Graham come. Army. Please check out the one Graham Army. It is a great show. Um, Graham and I do great things. It's check all out coming together. Um, yeah, check out uh, Shirt Caviar. We got the 2019 Black History Month collection out now. We have the 2019 collection, which uh, the One Gram Army shirt is available in regular unisex T-shirts, and I also have a tank top just specifically for women. Great design by me. Um, you'll love it. You'll spread awareness for One Gram Army. Pod Caviar also has a shirt. Listen, we're here. 2019 is our year. We're doing big things. Um, That's Graham. I'm Tony. Thank you for listening, and we're out.